The Linus Tech Tips Linux Gaming Challenge is finally over, and I could do a 30-minute reaction video going over every single last point that was made, criticizing every single thing that was said. But I've done that three times already, and that sounds kind of boring. What I'd much rather do instead is expand upon this final point that Linus made, because while I agree with it, I think knowing the entire picture, knowing the past where we came from and the future where we're going, offers a much brighter picture. Overall, I'm really happy I did the challenge. I learned a lot and it gave me a lot of hope for the future. And I will absolutely be trying to stick with Linux when the Steam Deck shows up sometime next year. But to summarize the question that we set out to answer, is this the year of the Linux desktop? For gamers, the answer is no. Obviously. And the more niche your use case gets, you know, maybe you're super into modding or the racing or flight sim scenes, or maybe you're a big VR lover, <laughs> the more resounding- Definitely if you're a big VR lover. No, gets. Now I do basically all of my PC gaming under Linux, and I could show you footage all day of various games running perfectly fine under Linux. Right now I'm probably doing exactly that. But the reason why I can do that is because my tastes line up with the sort of stuff that typically works. I don't really care for like competitive multiplayer games. I don't really care actually for many multiplayer games in general. And I'm very much happy to pick and choose the games I actually play. I don't have a friend group that's like, oh, we're going to go and play this specific game. And when there is a very specific game I want to play, for example, a while back I played Borderlands the pre-sequel, I'm happy to accept that maybe it's going to require some level of tweaking to either get working or get working in a good state. Maybe trying out different versions of Proton and Wine, maybe trying out different launch options, trying out different installation scripts, or maybe even moving files around the installer placed in the wrong location. So sure, while the experience today is by no definition perfect, and obviously still needs tons and tons of work, what's important to consider is where we've come from and where we're going. Because only a few short years ago, none of this was possible. Tools like Lutris and Play on Linux have existed for quite a long time at this point, 2009 and 2007 respectively, and then more recently tools like Bottle showed up in 2017, and these have made dealing with wine considerably easier for the regular users, automating and obfuscating all of its annoying configuration, so the only people who have to deal with that are the developers of the install scripts. Prior to tools like this actually existing, you would either have to go and find an install script on some forum somewhere, or work out how to use Wine yourself. And obviously for most users, that's not something you're really going to be doing. Now even though tools like that were around, Obviously, the results they produced, at least at the time, weren't in a state that most people were happy with, or a lot of people probably didn't even know the tools existed at the time. And that's probably why the Steam machines failed when they were released. Valve obviously recognized this, and some years later, in 2018, they decided to release Proton. Proton being a fork of wine, which basically made all of the game configuration stuff really, really easy, and also integrated it directly into the Steam client. But when Proton first released, it didn't really have that many supported games. Obviously, other games probably were working at the time, but only 28 games were known to actually work. And then not long after that, Proton GE showed up, that being a build of Proton which had some extra patches in it, which for some games have been pretty much required, if not required, at least offered a much better experience than just running the vanilla version of Proton. And over time, Proton has been continued to be improved, and from that initial list of 28 games, at least according to ProtonDB, there is now nearly 18,000 games which are actually supported. It should be noted that this number is by no means perfect, because ProtonDB bases everything on user reporting. So let's say you have a game that's, I don't know, not very popular, but people were playing it two years ago, and then sometime between then, when it actually was known to be working, 
and now there was a patch that broke the game. Now, if nobody's playing the game, nobody's going to be doing user reporting, so all of the user reports are still going to be saying, hey, this game is actually working, but in reality, when you test it yourself, you realize that's no longer the case. But ProtonDB is at least a good measure of whether something should be working, and in most cases, even if the reports are kind of old, it's still going to be working when you go and try it out today. But if you're unsure, only try out games that have recent reporting, or if you can find stuff outside of ProtonDB of people actually playing the game, then that's also a good measure as well. But outside of Proton, it's not like Valve has just been sitting around waiting for things to magically work. They've been funding other development efforts to make sure that Linux is actually ready to have gaming actually work well. So throughout 2020 and 2021, they've been working with Collabora to get the Futex 2 patches into the Linux kernel. Without going too much into the technical details, edit a full video on Futex 2 which I'll leave linked in the description down below basically allows a thread to wait for a resource to open in a way that is more akin to the way it works on Windows. And because all of this software is written to work on Windows, this should, under certain circumstances, allow the application to operate in a more efficient manner. And you've probably heard about this one, but more recently, Valve has also been working with the developers of various anti-cheat systems like EAC, Easy Anti-Cheat, and BattleEye to bring their support through Proton. Now, you can have your opinions on whether EAC or BattleEye are actually good at their job, whether they actually stop cheaters playing a game, or whether anti-cheat should exist just full stop, but what they are really good at is stopping Linux players actually playing a game. And considering how popular these solutions actually are, they aren't going anywhere. So making sure they actually work through the system the Linux players are actually going to be using is absolutely fundamental. I don't think you're going to convince any game development studios outside of the ones doing it purely out of passion to throw away their entire development architecture just to support a market share that is maybe one or one and a half percent. So making it easy for these game developers to make the games as they always have, but get these games also working on Linux is the way that you're gonna make gaming on Linux actually easier. Now, obviously Steam is by no means the entire gaming world. At this stage, it seems like every AAA publisher at some point is going to have their own launcher. Whether it's Ubisoft, EA, Blizzard, Rockstar, Epic, doesn't matter who it is. What I would eventually love to see though is Linux versions of these launches, and they just integrate Proton. Like, don't even bother to properly support it, because, hey, that costs money. Just release a Linux version, and just let Valve do the Proton work for you. That would at least be a step in the right direction, but as it currently stands, what we need to rely on is Wine progressively getting better and better to allow tools like Lutris to let you run these launches and run the games inside of those launches. So while Linux gaming today may look bleak and may not be in a state where you're actually happy to use it, what we need to remember is even just a few short years ago, like four years ago, gaming on Linux was a whole different landscape and was vastly more difficult than it is today. And every single day it keeps getting easier and easier, and maybe one day, maybe 2022, isn't the year of the Linux gaming desktop. But Valve has a vested interest in making sure that gaming on Linux is actually good. So maybe if it's not ready today, come back every so often, maybe once a year, once every six months, and maybe by then, it'll be in a state you're actually happy with, or maybe it won't be, but it will still be better. And even if under some weird situation, Valve decides they no longer want to support Proton themselves, because the tool is open source, I don't see it ever going anywhere. Unless they just remove the option to Steam play inside of Steam, I think the people are always going to be supporting Proton. But let me know what you think. Do you think we're in a much better state than we were before and we are heading in a good direction? Or are you one of those people who think that every single Linux game should be a native Linux game 
And because we are putting so much emphasis on Proton, it's going to kill off any reason to actually work on them. I would love to know. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, certainly bear pay, linked in the description down below. Down there as well, I've got my podcast, Tech for Tea, and my gaming channel, Brody Robson Plays. And that's going to be it for me, so I'm out.